afternoon, Skylab. Uh, we have a special science conference scheduled today, as you know, to celebrate the perihelion passage of Kohotek. And we have here in the Moker to uh, carry on the usual Kohotek science conference with you today. Uh, standing in for the other Kohotek PIs, we have Dr. Bobish Kohotek, the discoverer of the comet, and he'd like to ask you a few questions when you're ready. Over. Uh, Roger Houston, we're ready to go. Good afternoon, Dr. Good afternoon. I'm very glad to have an opportunity to following the Comet 1973F during its most critical day, during its perihelion passage, and uh, from the place where most research of that comet is concentrated. Especially it is a great pleasure for me to greet you, Mr. Gibson, Mr. Kerr, and Mr. Pork, as the first human being studying a comet from outer space. Your mission is indeed a very important for astronomy. I have uh, the following uh, questions. Uh, you observed the comet visually last Sunday and Monday. You compared it with, uh, in brightness with Mercury and suggested that there were color features in the coma. Do you have anything more to say on those observations? Not too much to add to that, sir, because uh, we have not seen much of the comet visually since those last observations. Uh, the one time in which I was the one who observed the color, uh, I have not seen the comet since. Uh, the next time I saw the comet was uh, on the uh, SO-52 white light coronagraph. Oh yes. oh, yes. And how about the tail, for example? Uh, the tail we have found, uh, as it becomes more foreshortened uh, to us, uh, became much wider. And uh, uh, let me uh, let me give you uh, figures that are relative to the display we have on the ATM. I would say that the uh, the coma, the bright coma, was approximately uh, three sixteenths, one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And um, I would say that the tail that we could see, however foreshortened, uh, extended only about one quarter inch away from the coma and uh, spread like a fan to uh, approximately three eighths of an inch at its out, uh, outermost end. Uh, have you glimpsed to the comet since Monday? I mean, visually? Uh, no, sir, we have not. Uh, I saw um, a transmitted picture of the comet you got with the coronagraph yesterday. There is a certain indication of the tail on the copies available down here. I wonder how much of the tail were you able to see up there? Uh, Dr. Gibson uh, made that observation and uh, took a Polaroid picture that we have up here with us, and I'll let him speak to that. Dr. Kovacek, it looked uh, to us that the uh, tail fanned out, as Jerry said, and it was about uh, 20 degrees uh, as far as the fan from the axis. And we were able to see it back to a distance of around uh, three times the uh, size of the coma. Uh, after that, it was lost in the uh, noise of the uh, white light display. Uh, how is the brightness changing from day to day? Uh, you are the only people uh, you see this comet at present, and therefore your information is very valuable. Well, uh, unfortunately, we are not able to see it by eye. We can only tell by what we see on the white light chronograph display. That uh, display has indicated that the brightness certainly is increasing. The display itself has a um, filtering function which uh, allows, the, uh, allows you to see the corona much better so that it's a factor of 100 from the uh, edge of the occulting disk all the way out to the edge uh, of the display. So we were only able to see it at the uh, very beginning, very close to the edge of the display. Now we can see it pretty much right up next to the, uh, uh, fairly close to the occulting disk, so I'm sure we're at least up a factor of 10 from that when we first saw it, and perhaps greater than that. Uh, yes, uh, 
uh, calculations suggest that uh, the comet uh, may have a sort of sunward spike around the New Year Day. Could you watch for this phenomenon? We certainly will. We'll be watching for the sunward spike and also for two tails and perhaps for uh, a breakup, which uh, if that happens, it would certainly be dynamic. Uh, we'll be looking for it. Uh, why don't I hand it over to uh, Bill Pogue and let him discuss the right results of it. We first started making... will be coming right up to you. We thought we got LOS, story. Yes. Yes. Um, it is uh, uh, very probably the new comet, and uh, the determination of uh, the orbit, the exact, accurate determination of the orbit is very important, uh, because uh, if it is a new comet, uh, it uh, could uh, leave some information about, not only about comets, but about uh, the uh, origin of the solar system, and it's uh, very important. Oh, yes, uh, to back to the question about the composition. Uh, of course, uh, all observations about composition are very valuable, but especially uh, observations uh, made during the perihelion passage are very important because, uh, as I said already, uh, you are uh, the only people you can see the comet now. When 
you were able to see it, and you were looking at some of the uh, visible emissions, were you able to detect any molecule? Uh, one uh, question, uh, ground-based observation of uh, the H-alpha emission um, was reported some time ago. Have you ever detected the comet's H-alpha emission? Uh, no, we've not. We have certainly uh, tried to see it. Uh, we've looked for it on both the H-alpha display, uh, which of course is geared for uh, a much higher emission, the solar emission. Uh, and we've also looked for it on our extreme ultraviolet monitor. And uh, we have not been able to detect it so far. We hope that uh, at its brightest point, uh, that is what we're working on this afternoon, that we may be able to see it. Yes, uh Thank you very much for a most interesting talk. Uh, let me congratulate you ab upon the accomplishment you have achieved uh, so far and wish you the best of success in your further observations and uh, flawless splash down in February. Thank you very much. Dr. Kohotek, on behalf of the Skylab 3 crew, I'd like to tell you that we're honored to have this opportunity to speak to you, sir and we'll do our best to get the best data we possibly can. Good day, sir.